To get started, we're going to bring a Fusion Composition clip straight to the Fusion page. And the first thing we're going to do is to bring in a text node. And then we're going to write our text in the text box. And then we're going to bring up the size just a little bit. And now we're ready to uh, get kerning. So kerning refers to the practice of adjusting the space between letters in a text. And in DaVinci Resolve, there are several ways to go about this. The first is to use the viewer toolbar on the top left. And we're going to select the second left tool, which is allow menu positioning. And when you click that, you're going to see these green squares show up at the bottom of each letter, which are going to turn red when you select uh, each individual letter. And you can also select a group of letters very easily as well. Now to move the letters left and right, simply click on the red square and then drag it left or right to increase or decrease the amount of space between letters. And you can also easily reset all this by simply going to advanced controls and then click clear all under menu positioning. This will reset all the changes that you just made. Lastly, if you hold down the option key, when you move the letter left and right, this will ensure that it's going to move in a fairly straight and linear direction so that you don't easily mess up when you're kerning. And this applies to a group of letters as well. So let's make the selection on the screen and then we're going to hold down the option key and then move it left and right in order to adjust the space in between letters. All right, let's reset everything and we're going to look at another way to current, which is to use character level styling. So let's right click the text box and then in the menu, select character level styling. And then we're going to click uh, the modifiers tab up top uh, to activate character level styling. The first thing we're going to do here is to select the letter that we want to make changes to. And once that is done, we're going to the shading uh, tab and then under position offset, we're going to change the X axis uh, to uh, increase or decrease uh, the space. And the same goes with a group of uh, letters as well. Uh, we can do that very easily using the same parameter. And when you double click that parameter, that will reset all the changes. Another way to kern is to uncheck use font kerning and let system automatically do this for us. But to better illustrate this, we're actually going to uh, the shading tab first, and then we're going to enable the second element, and we're going to select bounding box for each uh, individual uh, letter in our text. And you can clearly see that there is an overlap uh, in between the letter T and letter U. So uh, this is what the system is going to really look at. But this is also is very dependent on the font itself. So if we change the font to something like Optima, uh, which has a similar situation, but another font like Oswald has pretty even spacing, uh, seems to have pretty even spacing between uh, letters. Uh, same with the font Tahoma. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's uh, return to our original font. And then we're going to go ahead and uncheck use font kerning. This, as you can see, is going to adjust that overlap between T and U. Uh, another font like PT Sense uh, is going to have a similar situation. So the system is going to fix the gap between K and E and T and U. But a font like Oswald, which has pretty even spacing already, uh, doing this is not really going to uh, make that much of a difference. And lastly, you can also force mono space. And to do that, we are going to select a different font like PT Sense, where you can see that clearly each letter has different width. So let's go ahead and adjust the force mono space slider all the way up to one. This you can see is going to ensure all the letters has the same width. And then we can also uncheck use font kerning on top of that. But whether this looks good or not, whether this is aesthetically appealing or not, is highly dependent on the user, dependent on yourself. But you certainly have the ability to do all this. Now, we saw earlier that we can easily kern a text using the viewer toolbar up top, but we can also easily uh, create an animate effect. So let's go to menu positioning and then set the keyframe. And then we're going to move a tutorial uh, off the screen to the right. And then we're going to move the letter U off the screen towards the bottom. And then let's move a few frames over to the right and then bring Toriel uh, back into the screen. And then uh, once that is done, we're going to move a few frames over again to the right and then bring Toriel a little bit over to the right. And then uh, we're going to move a few frames over to the right. And then at this point, we're going to bring the letter U back to the top. So now, as you can see, we have an animated effect going on. We can also come to Spline Editor, 
adjust the interpolation between each keyframe. And once that is done, you guys can see that we now have a, a interesting, a fun, a simple animated effect uh, created using the same tool uh, that we used for kerning. All right, guys, so let's once again kern our text here. And once that is done, we're going to do something called tracking. Now, tracking is essentially adjusting the space between all the letters in a text uh, by equal amounts. And it's a little bit different than kerning and also tracking will include the kerning that you just did. So let's select our entire text here, and then we're going to hold down the Option key and then click either the left or the right key on your keyboard. And this, as you can see, is going to increase or decrease the space between all the letters for this entire text. And you can also select only certain parts of the text as well. So let's do that just for the word uh, kerning. And now this is also going to do the same thing. Another way to do tracking is to simply use the tracking parameter on the right. And once again, the key thing to note here is that the change that you make is going to be applied equally to all the letters in this text. And also on top of that, when using parameters instead of on-screen commands, you are allowed much, much more precise adjustments. And if you want to only focus on certain parts of the text, we can once again take advantage of character level styling. Let's select only the word uh, tutorial and then apply tracking. But you're going to notice that the kerning that we did earlier is also going to be affected by this. So in real life, it is often a good practice to kern first and then do tracking. Okay, guys, I hope this tutorial helps. And as always, I will see you next time. Thank you.